Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining our webinar today. Uh, first of all, I have to share our plan for today because uh, during our presentation, I'm going to cover some topics related to best practices in building our security network security strategy in order to avoid uh, network uh, network level attacks. And uh, in the second part of presentation, I uh, will focus more on the new concepts, approaches, and models we should adopt actually in order to keep a decent level of protection of our network assets. I mean, for example, the zero trust model, the SASE model, which is the secure access service edge, the model or the new model of Gartner, as well the DIE, which is distributed immutable ephemeral model. Maybe you heard something about this model, but we're going to clarify a bit more aspects related to those uh, new strategies. So uh, we are planning at the end of the conversation to have a Q&A session. So be prepared to to yeah to address some some questions. Uh, yeah, we are planning to to uh, have enough time yeah to to answer the questions at the end of my presentation. So again, welcome everybody. Uh, I'll, I'm going to skip yeah my self introduction because Pritama uh, she did it uh, already. Instead, I would like to start with a big thank you addressed to all of you, the IT guys, including the IT security guys, providing services and support during those difficult times, connecting, keeping people working from, from home, connected to their businesses and connected to their, their peers, providing uh, high quality services 24 by seven. So again, big thank you guys being in the, in, in the first line of activity related to IT uh, support, uh, support and security services. Um, if you're talking about this particular times, yeah, I mean the COVID outbreak, you are seeing a lot of new issues related to cybersecurity. Why? Because it was even a question before we start uh, our conversation. Yeah, uh, The attackers are taking any time advantage of the opportunities um, and anytime there are some something new, some changes in our life, in our organization. So um, the, the attackers are taking advantage of exploiting some vulnerabilities associated to those new times. And so I have some examples here, phishing, security, social, uh, social engineering techniques are to name just a few, uh, just a few of those, uh, those uh, new vulnerabilities. A lot of phishing attacks, some, some of the attacks we do believe are just uh, originated by um, yeah, nation state uh, actors and so we're going to discuss a bit during the presentation about, about this. So um, according to Interpol, yeah, we have a top list of the cyber threats associated to those times, to uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID, uh, uh, outbreak. And uh, as well, uh, they do recommend us a checklist yeah, of security controls, additional security controls we should implement and should be aware, should pay enough attention in our organization in order to, to avoid uh, dangerous uh, attacks, most of them related to uh, networks, yeah, because they are using network vectors as long people are working from home, are connected from home, and uh, not any time uh, the security it was properly configured uh, before. Yeah, it is actually uh, such behavior. We're seeing this behavior. Most of the organizations are forced to adopt um, very accelerated path for. Uh, for digital transformation of the, uh, the organization and a lot of organizations who are not including government organizations, public services, they were not prepared to handle this. And uh, I will start um, yeah, just reviewing some basics related to cybersecurity framework. Uh, I guess most of you are familiar with uh, the NIST cybersecurity framework, including uh, in those stages, five stages, identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. Uh, some specific activities of considering and implementing security controls in order to 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 protect our assets and our business uh, business assets. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, another useful model to consider, I think, is, is uh, uh, this one. Yeah, defense in depth protection. Yeah, it's coming from the uh, military frameworks. And uh, in most of the situations, we're focusing on protecting efficiently the data, which is stored in databases. And uh, in order to protect the databases, you should protect the applications. Having direct access to the applications, both data and applications are stored by hosts, so you have to protect the host. But it's something to to consider uh, very very carefully. It's something to consider very carefully related to to network uh, network assets uh, protection. I mean, it's about it, it's about internal network protection, perimeter protection when connecting to the public networks. And so we are focusing the conversation on those particular particular layers. As well, if you are still keeping the conversation at a fundamental level, we should consider the attack chain model, yeah, which is very which is very popular. So we have to to identify uh, the stages of an attack. So that uh, should be a threat agent, cyber criminals, employees, activists, nation states attack, terrorists or competitors, yeah, competitor corporations. So you should identify the reason why those guys are targeting your business assets and uh, should be a reason anytime you should identify a, a, a reason. The reasons may be different. And those guys are using attack vectors. Yeah, they're identifying some uh, attack vectors using the tools and the tools are honestly available to anyone nowadays so if you're reviewing just the content uh, and information related to the attack tools which are available on public sites open open uh, platforms we're using for pen testing as well those tools but the same tools may be used by the by the attackers i'm not talking only about the the dark sites yeah the dark web uh, but we are we're talking as well public sites yeah for example on github or similar sites you can see a lot of information about the potentially attack tools and vectors and so the attackers are using using uh, those attack vectors uh, they are identifying some weaknesses in the security configuration of uh, uh, organizations so they are identifying missing or misconfigured uh, security controls and doing some exploitation using the tools they were able to identify, uh, they are generating a technical impact on the assets or functions or processes in organization. And this one definitely is generating a business impact. So this is the flow scenario of an attack. So just to, just to have this in, uh, very clearly in, in, in mind for the next steps of our conversation. And uh, if you're talking um, about uh, network attacks, we are identifying a lot of, lot of typical attacks, yeah, using different attack vectors. Um, yeah, you are familiar with uh, such kind of attacks, like distributed denial of service, many the middle attack, uh, injection attacks, uh, application level attacks, so privilege escalation. So it, it's a long list of a such uh, of a such attacks, but. I think it's important to consider as well, besides analyzing the, the popular, the popular uh, vectors for the attacks, I have here a report of um, Rapid7, so identifying the, in the list, the main attack vectors used by the, the attackers. But I think it's important as well to consider the timeline for attacks. What you can see, most of the attacks are happening in very short time. So less than one hour, it's enough to compromise the full environment of a company. Wow, this is this is important to consider because the, the uh, according according actually this this uh, this uh, presentation, yeah, this this report, we have to act very fast actually in order to react very fast to to uh, to consider a proactive strategy in order to block the attacks because if you are uh, if you're relying on reactive strategy i'm afraid it's not it, it's it's not an efficient strategy um as well i have another report here of uh, firewire which is uh, displaying very clearly that a lot of vulnerabilities that may be exploited by the attackers are exploited as zero days. So at the time, there is not a majority of the attacks are related to vulnerabilities associated to, to zero day exploits. So there is no patch available. But in the same time, 
you can identify a huge number of vulnerabilities exploited even after the, the patch it was issued. Yeah, more than 40%. Yeah, that means what? There is no mechanism of patching, updating, uh, uh, reviewing the security controls in order to protect our assets. This is real life, so we should be aware about, about this. On the other hand, if you're considering uh, the, the attack uh, landscape, you are seeing a lot of network-related attacks, like uh, distributed denial-of-service attacks, are not considered to, to, uh, uh, as an attack final attack itself yeah a such a such attack but it's just an evasion technique used in order to to hide or to amplify the attacks of some other attack techniques so it's a combination anytime between the attack techniques for example a distributed denial of service attack may confuse the the uh, protection barriers, the protection strategies like intrusion prevention system, intrusion detection systems, other research to hide, for example, the scanning activities, or maybe use, uh, for example, on other stages of initial compromise, for example, as an evasion technique, or the uh, as an evasion technique for the final uh, final mission of the attack that want to extract uh, to extract the data. Yeah, just to make the, our systems do not identify, do not generate a protection system, do not generate and are reducing the efficiency of our protection strategy. We should be aware about this combination of techniques uh, using a TTP combination uh, by the attackers in order to maximize the impact of their attacks. Um, about um, network protection best practices, I'm not uh, considering to handle one by one those techniques, uh, best practices, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with uh, most of them. I would, uh, I would insist a bit about to consider this, uncovering hidden threats. This is very important. As a practice strategy, threat intelligence concept, we're going to discuss a bit more about this. Well, this is very important to, book, to consider to consider by the organization as in, in their protection strategy. Uh, if you're considering about uh, implementing security, this conversation about implementing security controls in the organization, so we are relying a lot on network protection systems, including firewalls, IDS, IPSs, uh, honeypots, and so on. Uh, intrusion detection systems may be very complex sometimes, and I have a, I have a picture here uh, presenting uh, a complex model of intrusion detection system. What you are seeing that a such intrusion detection system, it's relying a lot on machine learning, for example, AI, including AI tools, yeah, uh, because uh, otherwise a such system could not be so efficient. And uh, we have to we have to consider all the strategies of uh, of uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence to uh, to to better protect our assets. But the quest question is, anyone, any organization should afford a such uh, to to use a such complex systems? Most probably not using internal resources that could be too expensive, too difficult to implement a such complex uh, complex system in the internal network. So. Um, integrated, integrated unified threat management solutions starting to be more and more popular, especially, um, especially for um, small and medium uh, and medium organizations. Yeah. Because um, yeah, it, it, sometimes they're using appliances. Those platforms are providing some appliances, integrating filer intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems, uh, VPNs, yeah, anti-spam solutions, antivirus solutions. Uh, everything in the same platform in a single appliance. It's a big market for for this. You can see the Gartner. Magic quadrant related uh, related to this, and uh, especially for small and medium uh, uh, enterprises, so this solution could be very very efficient. Um, in the same time, I would like to I would like to to bring into our conversation this topic of organizing people, cybersecurity uh, teams in your in your organization. A very common approach. 
uh, it's that one to build a pen testing strategy in an organization to check the efficiency of implementation of security controls, to check if how vulnerable are the assets, the business environment of, uh, of your organization uh, to network security attacks, especially. And uh, yeah, including, uh, including different, uh, different approaches uh, for, uh, for uh, tests, you can see as approach in pen testing, we have white box, black box, gray box. Uh, you could use uh, different attack vectors, external, internal, or combined in an APT style attack, or different, different techniques used, because you are simulating actually the activity of the attackers in order to see if the implementation, uh, security implementation of the strategy is enough. The security controls implemented in the organizations are are, are uh, good enough. The, this implementation is good enough to to keep uh, to keep the attackers uh, away to block the uh, the attack. So those are the activities, the stages of activities. So in the in the pen testing, yeah, we're considering uh, uh, documenting very well. Yeah, intelligence gathering in a lot of situations using open source intelligence gathering. We have plenty of platforms on, of, uh, and tools for this. And simulating the activity of the attackers, uh, identifying some entry points yeah, and, uh, to, the, to the network. And after that, doing exploitation, so compromising the systems with uh, different scripts, malware, different attack tools, um, initiating a lateral movement activity. Yeah doing data exfiltration and after that providing reporting yeah this is the this is the the goal of the penetration testing activity to provide a very useful report uh, including recommendations how to fix the issues how to block the vulnerabilities and and so on this is the the generic model of penetration uh, penetration testing the pen testers are using uh, different tools and platforms specially designed for for this to help their uh, their activity uh, well those tools i have to to admit uh, may be used by the, the the attackers they are maybe inspiring each other because the idea is to use the tools which are actually simulating in a realistic mode the activity of uh, uh, real attackers. And um, the attackers, sometimes we have to consider very complex scenarios because the attackers are very, very smart. Um, just implementing security controls in organizations like firewalls, IDS does not, uh, it's in a static mode, does not help you too much because the, the attackers are using different techniques to bypass your protection barriers, your network protection barriers. And um, we can consider, for example, the firewall evasion techniques. I have a list here in, uh, on the screen of common, uh, common techniques used by the attackers to, to bypass the, the firewall protection. And uh, even more complex uh, techniques they are using in order to, to bypass the intrusion detection system uh, intrusion uh, prevention uh, prevention systems yeah to to still uh, being su still being successful in targeting uh, targeting uh, the the victims the victim systems um a very common technique is that this one to use not just technology to avoid the detection of the, uh, the 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 attacks techniques used by the attackers but they are using a lot of social engineering because they are targeting the weakest link in the organization so I have uh, just uh, an example here, uh, a document sent as an attachment. Normally it's a spreadsheet or a Word document. You are invited to, uh, to enable content just to see in a proper mode the, the content of this document. And once you're doing this, clicking this button, it's enabling the macros and the macros are running behind, launching, uh, launching the payload and exploiting the information from your computer, exfiltrating to a command control center. This is a very common technique used by the attacker, attackers in order to bypass the protection uh, strategies. You don't need to be, you know, to, to be a, an admin, a local admin of a computer to uh, to to make uh, in order to to make this attack possible. The standard user could enable um, a macros uh, using that button of enable content, and uh, well, the exploitation the exploitation could run. Uh, what I'm saying, as a pen tester, we should consider uh, very complex scenarios in order to build our uh, 
our, our penetration testing uh, projects uh, because uh, the attackers are using different techniques and we have to simulate potential activities in order to in order to bypass the protection strategies for example uh, web application scenario common web application scenario which is uh, which is emulating the activity of uh, pen tester, right? emulating the activity of the hackers. So using using different techniques of exploitation, yeah, checking the vulnerabilities associated to different uh, techniques like uh, SQL injection, um, yeah, cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, and so there is a long list of web application vulnerabilities because we are talking about this, and we should be familiar uh, with different platforms and tools used for pen testing, yeah like uh, proxy tools, burp switch, uh, we have just a list in the left side of the tools that may be used in order to identify and to test the existence of those vulnerabilities in a such complex scenario. So what I'm meaning, uh, what I'm, I, I mean, it's uh, as a pen tester, you should be people, you, you should be a very skilled guy, yeah, in order to, to update any time the information related to the last, latest TTPs in order to provide a very efficient activity. So um, if you're talking about how to organize the cybersecurity guys in organization, you know, we are combining, uh, you are, uh, we are organizing the people traditionally in the red team, in the red team and as well in the blue team. But we have the new model using uh, using uh, purple team. Purple team is not a physical team. Purple team it's a virtual team, uh, including uh, including people from the red team and blue team, and uh, organizing some tabletop exercises yeah, in a complex scenario to build a better or to update the, the protection strategy. This is actually uh, the model red team attack simulation model. Yeah, including uh, all stages of the, the attack, elevation of privilege, uh, lateral movement, uh, simulating connections to command control center and, and so on. This is the, this is the, the attack simulation. And uh, we should add at the activity of the, in top of activity of uh, uh, red team, we should add uh, activity specific to, to purple team, for example, um, tabletop exercises, yeah, building complex scenarios and discussing together the best strategy to implement in order to in order to to, to block the the attack. So it's a it's a combined activity from different teams in an in an organization to be more efficient. If you are looking uh, just uh, shortly in this uh, picture, yeah, about uh, uh, red team findings, okay. What you can find, uh, identifying the vulnerabilities, what kind of vulnerabilities, a lot of them associated are associated to, to uh, network environments, like uh, lack of network uh, segregation, uh, limited network monitoring, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, using uh, old, uh, old uh, protocols, no egress uh, filtering and, and so on. So those are the, the findings. We should be aware and to, to, to fix the issues related uh, to, to this, implementing uh, proper security controls. If um, we are considering the red team kill chain approach, including specific activities, uh, according the, the model of Lockheed Martin, yeah, recon, delivery, foothold, persist, move, elevate, and exfiltrate, yeah, uh, we are considering as well the, um, the related activity of the blue team for attack detection. So for each 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 part, for each component of the kill chain, we should identify the the uh, response of the blue team when implementing security security controls. But this is just for attack detection. I'm afraid it's too late for an organization just considering this strategy, attack detection, yeah? The best strategy is that one to do attack disruption following the kill, kill chain components, yeah? You have to disrupt the attack. So for this reason, we have to, uh, to use more complex tools. Uh, you should be, you should, uh, you are expecting to have a very, very quick reaction because otherwise you cannot you cannot deal uh, in a proper mode with those attacks. That would be too late, yeah, to stop an attack uh, with a reactive approach. I think this model is very useful. Cyber kill chain metrics. 
And so I'm happy to, to, to share an example of such, uh, such metrics because you have in the left side, you have the, the phases of the kill chain. You are identifying the phases of the kill chain and you have here, yeah, the response expected. Yeah, detect, deny, disrupt, degrade. And in each cell of this metrics, you can identify the appropriate security control that you should uh, you should uh, implement and some best practices in the, the uh, right side. So it's good to design for any organization when building a such the security strategy to build a such matrix and according yeah that could be customized based on the based on the, your your particular environment. Uh, threat intelligence, it's very important to be considered. Again, we, if you're talking about threat intelligence, we're talking about a uh, proactive, uh, proactive approach. We're, we're talking about the latest TTPs, uh, the, uh, the latest potential incident that could affect your organization. And many organizations are actually uh, building such teams and those teams, uh, threat intelligence teams, and threat intelligence teams are actually feeding with which uh, the, uh, are feeding the teams of uh, incident responders, SOC analysts, with a lot of information that could be useful to prevent attack. It's about the proactive, ap proactive approach, not just about reactive approach. And uh, a very useful model is this one of MITRE. Yeah, you are familiar probably with MITRE attack. It's a very popular site providing a lot of uh, useful guidance related to related to tools techniques of the attackers especially very useful when you are analyzing uh, you are analyzing the apt groups activity and because you're uh, saying who is behind uh, trying to do some attribution and trying to identify the the techniques used by by each uh, apt group and uh, you have multiple views of uh, of uh, this site it's very useful and uh, I would like to show you, for example, a tool associated to, to attack. You can, it's, it's the MITRE Navigator, because you can, for example, um, you, can, uh, you, you can actually consider different, uh, different, uh, different uh, APT groups, for example, selecting the information. I'm generating, gener yeah, maybe I'm building a new, a new layer, this and identifying the activities, specific activities for a particular, for a particular uh, APT group. And you can see what kind of tools they're using on all stages of, um, of a MITRE attack model, which is um, similar to that one of uh, Cyber Kill Chain, but it's a bit customized because it's including multiple categories of activities. For example, um, I have here, I built a layer which the tools use, the techniques used by uh, APT3 group, which is a popular popular uh, advanced persistent threat, uh, threat group. And I have here another layer presenting the, uh, presenting the tools used by, uh, used by APT29, which is a, uh, well, it's, it's a Russian, it's a Russian APT group. And uh, you can see the techniques they are using for each stages of the attack. If you're clicking on each of them, it's represented in a, in a particular color, so you can you can see the technique. Yeah, there is a long list of technique, and you you can see the in this matrix, enterprise matrix, you can see the specific activities uh, and the specific tools used by a such APT group. And if you want to make some associations between APT groups, because sometimes you are seeing a similar attack techniques, maybe there is a connection between. You never know. Uh, you can see, for example, here the tools used by the techniques used by the APT3 in red color, the um, uh, tools uh, techniques used by APT29 in uh, yellow color, and in green you can see the common techniques. Sometimes this is useful. You can identify uh, network-related attack vectors in those uh, in those uh, techniques in the big list of techniques. And you can you can identify some common techniques, making some associations sometimes between the activity of different advanced persistent threat uh, threat group. For example, uh, they are using scheduled tests, they are using scripting, they are using PowerShell as well. Both of the groups, yeah, 
you can um, you can yeah they're using they're using again scheduled tasks even for uh, this privilege escalation uh, task they're using common ports just to just to hide the attack to cover the to cover the attacks so it's a very very useful model to be considered when analyzing the uh, the the threat that's against this one of mitre uh, mitre attack okay so we have to consider as well some uh, i did promise you to have a conversation about uh, the new models we should probably adopt in configuring our nature protection strategy to update our strategies to update um, update um, the uh, procedures of implementing the security controls to update the catalog of security control in an organization based on the new models one of the uh, new popular model is this uh, this one zero trust model and i have here the the uh, implementation of the the microsoft for the zero trust model you know uh, the principles of zero trust are verified express, ex uh, explicitly, explicitly everything. Use the um, least privilege access and use the model of assume breach. And implementing some tools. This is the this is the framework of Microsoft to implement uh, uh, zero trust, like uh, multi-factor authentication, policy-based adaptive access, micro segmentation, automation adoption of intelligence and, uh, and AI, great classification and protection. Those are some tools to drive the implementation of zero trust, uh, zero trust model. It's just an example. Um, another model I would like to, to tell you about is this one of services which are uh, considering to implement the, the, the architecture of the services and the strategy of implementing the services, security services and organization, because, you know, we are relying on um, uh, MSSPs, yeah, uh, managed security service provider services. Um, we're relying on a, another model, which is managed detection and response, providing better capabilities. There is a, actually a scale yeah, of implementation of such uh, such uh, services. We are discussing as well about because we're starting from the basic strategy, the centralized log management, which is honestly not providing the best best protection. But after that, considering the services provided by different uh, different providers, there is another model of co-manage CM, yeah, system information even management co-manage system, and a model which is uh, which is promoted by by uh, Gartner is this one uh, of um, uh, CM plus SOC implementation virtually in the cloud uh, cloud environment, SAS as a service, yeah, CM as a service being an option of implementation of this. It's helping especially small and medium organizations to better protect their, their assets, because otherwise that could be too high cost if they want to implement this internally. Uh, I have in this picture the um, representation of the model security model based on azure implementation so including actually the help of cloud services uh, which is which is promoted by microsoft uh, microsoft ap advanced threat protection model you can see uh, yeah as a client you can implement some limited limited model you have some some limited model to implement here but everything is managed from the cloud atp it's a platform running in the cloud so it's including uh, it's including uh, machine learning artificial intelligence and so everything being managed uh, from the cloud uh, in the cloud uh, platform so this is apparently the best uh, strategy to to be adopted and um, um, if you're talking about uh, the um, upcoming models, some other upcoming models, I will say I would say that this model is the traditional model, data centric, data center centric. Yeah, you have a data center, so uh, CDN defining a, a CDN content delivery network environment, the enterprise data center. So we have multiple connections from different uh, locations. You are connecting even for, to cloud from here. But this model seems to be an obsolete model. Uh, the new model promoted by by um, uh, by by Gartner last year, actually they did launch this concept is this one of secure access service edge. 
SASE. What is doing this? It's actually unified all services, providing convergence for all our security services in the cloud environment. So not keeping the traditional model of the data center centric, but converging all security related services in, in, in the cloud. And um, I have some, yeah, another representation of this, this model. So it's a convergence between network as a service and network security as a service, everything in a cloud. And this platform, Secure Access Service Edge, it's unifying actually the, the access in a software defined, uh, defined model. Well, this is uh, this seems to be uh, to be a model definitely to consider for the for for uh, for uh, our uh, uh, next design of the security strategy. Why? Because actually the cloud provider they have the power to implement a such model to to keep your resources protected. Yesterday at the build conference. You know, it's a virtual conference anymore, the build, the largest conference uh, of Microsoft for developers. Uh, you, can, you can still join because it's still, uh, still running today. Uh, well, it was Microsoft, they did announce a supercomputer they're going to use for artificial intelligence purpose. Uh, no less than 285,000 cores for processors, 10,000 graphical processor units, uh, the connection speed is 40, 400 um, gigabits per second. So it's an impressive, it's a top five in the top five most powerful computers in the world. And they are planning to use this to uh, provide open AI, open artificial intelligence. And of course, uh, we could benefit if you're in, in order to design our next cybersecurity strategy from this advantage using a such big power, computing power. And um, another model, besides, uh, besides I see, again, I told you about zero trust model, about uh, uh, SASE, and uh, which is, uh, which is um, Secure Access Service Edge, the model of Gartner. And there is a no new model I did found recently. It was a presentation this year in an RSA conference in, uh, in February. So about a new model that could adopt, maybe replacing the old model CIA model, yeah, confidential integrity and availability, the CIA tri triad. What is about this? So it's just a basic observation. Um, we're not talking about the security related services in this picture, yeah? We're talking about, um, for example, protection against uh, DDoS attacks. Well. What's the best strategy? Distributing the services. Okay, this is the best strategy to fight against against uh, against uh, DDoS attacks. Even this strategy, it was not originally designed for for security. Uh, the best strategy in order to in order to protect against uh, to protect our data, our information. Yeah, considering blockchain. Yeah, is the strategy of immutable yeah changes if there are some changes somewhere is maybe related to an attack data may be easy changing uh, reversing to the previous stage yeah in the blockchain strategy we're familiar so is the best is the best protection for integrity honestly and if you're considering for example platforms like docker microservices containerization maybe this could be one of the best protection techniques for confidentiality because actually um, attacker persistence could be hard in a such uh, such situation the risk may be avoided uh, very easily because all information is ephemeral you are not exposing a high valuable information in a single place in your organization so this model di distributed immutable ephemeral may be the next model replacing the old triad confidentially integrity and availability. Who knows? That could be, this is the model suggested by that researcher in the RSA, uh, Sunil Yu, in the RSA conference this, this year. Instead, because now we're focusing the protection strategy, the traditional uh, protection strategy, let's enlarge a bit this 
this image. So it's focusing on identifying the most important asset, protecting them, and detecting that ad. But this is not a very easy job. It's very, it's 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 consuming a lot of resources to to implement an efficient protection strategy for all those assets. Instead, maybe the DIA model, it's focusing on respond and recover strategy. So using limited resources to provide uh, to provide a, a protection strategy according to this model, distributed Im uh, immutable ephemeral. So everything, even you are targeted by attack, everything could be uh, uh, recovered very easily. There is no big pain if you're losing some data. So everything is distributed. Everything could be recovered very easily. You're not exposing entirely huge databases to an attack. So maybe you have to to think a bit uh, this this model. I think that could be a very useful model for the next. Uh, for the next years to to be adopted. So I think we are at the end of the uh, my my presentation. And uh, thank you very much for watching this presentation. I think now it's time for uh, questions, right?